Okay, game makers, for our last video of the week, we are going to make the basic block. Um, now, one of the things that somebody is probably wondering is, is how come we're not using the collision event to detect collisions? And that would be a really good uh, question. We can't really use collision event in the ball, especially when we're colliding with the wall, because we, ha we actually are anticipating a collision and not actually having the collision. Remember, it's going to see if in that in that frame, at its current speed, will it collide or or inter or overlap the wall? And um, so the collision hasn't happened yet. We're actually uh, detecting the collision and then very slowly moving the ball up to right to the wall and then having the collision happen. So the collision event wouldn't work there. I could have used it for the collision with the bat, um, but I really like the way it looks when you have all of your your events and actions happening in one place. But but just to show you it can be done, we'll go ahead and, and do that. But the first thing I need to do is create a sprite for the basic block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a 64 wide by 32 tall. Um, now, with with the uh, Game Maker 2, sadly, uh, there's some limits on on what you can do. Um, there's not um, there's not nearly the amount of features to make your things look a certain way. Uh, you can kind of fake it, but for now, um, I'm gonna use a, a different feature. I, I learned it very recently um, for, giving, for getting a variety of color into your blocks. In order to use this feature though, you have to be able to, uh, I'm gonna use the line tool here. You have to use stick with black white and gray scale. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and outline in, in black. Um, and then I'm going to do a little, um, actually I'm going to do a little detail on the inside. Let me choose a thinner line here. And um, let's see. And then I'm just going to color in with some white. And um, when before I start adding some shading, I'm actually going to go down here and, and uh, create a layer. And that way, if, if as, when I'm adding these details, if I decide I don't like it, um, it's really easy to fix. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a, a detail for some shading there, fill that in. Oops. Um, one thing I always forget, though, is when you create a new layer, it doesn't have the, uh, the outlining that might be on a different layer doesn't exist on that layer. So when you go to fill, um, it can lead to some problems. Um, so a little bit of shading there, and perhaps I'll add a, um, actually, I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, there's, the black outline probably isn't going to look great with the background that I have, but uh, that's okay. We're going to just stop there. I'm going to go ahead and create a new object, and the object is going to be the block. Um, so object, basic, block. And then um, in the create event, this is where I'm going to give it a chance to uh, colorize. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to randomize. And then I'm going to say that image blend. An image blend basically takes whatever color the sprite currently is and mixes some color with it. If you've ever taken an art class, you know one of the easiest colors to blend other colors with is white. White's a very weak pigment. It allows the other color to overtake it. Um, and so I'm going to say that that is going to be, and, and this is a game maker only, I think, uh, command, which is choose. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some different colors in there. So C underscore red, C underscore, uh, blue. Hey buddy, I'm going to go C underscore yellow, C underscore, um, orange. And let's see, C underscore. What else can I put in there? Um, I'm going to go with lime. That's a lighter color. And so it's going to blend one of these colors in with the sprite. So image underscore usually means um, it involves your sprite and uh, not so much the object, but the, the actual image associated with it. So it's going to choose one of those colors. And then um, I am going to go ahead and add the collision event. And the collision will be with the ball. So um, again, I, I've 
done a really poor job of naming things here and I apologize. So here's a collision with the ball. And um, so when you have a collision event, you can say with other, and it knows that that is the other thing in the collision. So in this case, it's the referring to the ball. We're gonna use a command move, bounce, all. And I'm gonna set that to true, which means uh, Game Maker is gonna try to make that, that bounce as, as precise as possible, as realistic as possible. Um, I don't think I need to do anything else with the ball. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get out of those brackets. I feel like later on I will add something there, but for now that's gonna be good. And then with itself, it's gonna instance destroy. So the, the block is gonna be colorized and it's gonna be put in the room. Um, when the ball bounces off it, it's gonna go away. Now, one of the things that, um, that a student has asked uh, is, can you create random levels? And so just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna create an object control. And then um, just for now, I'm, I'm gonna have to change this later. Uh, I'm gonna do a create event. In that create event, I'm gonna um, create a whole bunch of, of blocks and I'm gonna put them around the room. Um, and so I'm gonna say VARI and then for I equals zero, I less than 20. So we're gonna get 20 blocks in our room. I plus plus just means create, uh, add one each time you run through this. So this is another one of those loops that are gonna run continuously for the number of times that we say until I, or as long as I is less than 20. So I'm gonna instance create layer. And then what I wanna do is just say X, Y, um, the instance layer, instance, and then finally the object. So object basic block. But right now it's gonna just basically stack 20 blocks on top of each other. So that's not gonna be any good. So I'm gonna go back to my block and I'm gonna assure that each of these is gonna find its own place. And I'm gonna, again, use a while loop. And so I'm gonna say, while the place is not empty. Uh, so at the current X and Y location, do these things. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it choose a new X. So the new X is going to be from random range. And I'm gonna use our new friend, um, Sprite, X offset. So it's going to, it's going to make sure that um, it stays in the room and then room with minus Sprite X offset. And uh, if you remember uh, two videos ago, I, I use Sprite get X offset and had to say what the Sprite was. This is way faster. Um, and then why I'm going to keep it at the top of my room. Um, so I'm going to say that Y is going to be uh, random range sprite Y offset. So now it's going to keep the center up and down, uh, making sure that it's uh, not going off the screen at the top. And then I'm going to say room height divided by two. So it's going to stay in the top half of the room. So while the place isn't empty, while there's something there, it's gonna keep trying to find a location that is um, available. So that should be all I need there. So the only thing I need to do is put the controller in my room. And when that controller is created, it's gonna create a random room layout. So let's see if I've done all that correct. Cause that's a lot of things in one video. Um, so let's see if I get, Nope, I made a mistake. Um, instances, I did instance, you can see right there. And it needs to be on the instances layer. Um, dag nabbit, pardon my language there. That was, that was pretty rough. So let's see if we can get a random layout of blocks. You can see that the image blend chose one of the colors that I gave as an option. The controller randomly placed them around the, well, actually the, the controller just created 20 copies of this. And then the create event of the basic block um, found a new spot for them. So let's just go through, uh, look just a few times. 
So um, in this case, this is what my block looks block layout looks like. Um, it's kind of most of them are on the right. Let's do it one more time. And you can see they never overlap. And that while loop is doing that. If it finds that the place it's just is trying to be is occupied by something else, then it's going to try to find a new location. It's going to um, try to find a spot within these limits. Um, so a couple things you'll notice that they um, they don't overlap. You'll notice that they're randomly placed, and uh, they all stay at the top level of our room because we essentially said uh, you have to stay at the at the top. So let's see if they actually work. So you can see that the ball bounces off of them. They're destroyed. I, I don't have any sound yet, um, but this is the basic block. So um, in just a, well, what I feel is a short video, we did a whole bunch of things. We created a basic block that we can destroy. The ball interacts with it. And um, each one is, picks its color and I could do a list a mile long of, of colors that we could choose from. Uh, the sprite doesn't look fantastic. If I wanted a better looking sprite, I would have to spend a lot more time with it, but that wasn't really my focus uh, today. I just wanted to get that in the room and I wanted to answer the question, can you, and you already know the answer of, to this, if you can imagine it, you can do it in Game Maker. Can we create a random level? The question is, how do we make a random level? And, and I just showed you. So that is the last video of the week. A uh, lot going, a lot to go over, um, but I'm super excited to be doing this GML coding with you and showing you the capabilities of Game Maker. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will be fingers crossed waiting to see how well you do on the quiz on Friday.